Welcome to the LMP Electronics Scoring Tutorial. Prior to starting the game, when arriving at the bench, you'll see the iPad is loaded with all the games allocated to that court for the day. The iPad displays the date, time and court number and who's playing. Select the game you are going to score. The scorer and the referees will now sign the players in that are attending the game by clicking on the pencil icon in the top right. Select the players that are attending the game by clicking the boxes and ensuring that their number is correct. A player with their name crossed out means that they do not hold current Basketball New South Wales registration insurance and can't play until they have renewed and paid for their insurance. Make sure that there's no duplicate numbers on the team. If you go to save, you'll notice that a message pops up saying there's duplicate numbers on a team, so you'll need to change the numbers by clicking in the box and either clicking the up or down arrow or you can type a new number in. Once you've made the change you can now save this The ticks beside the players' names indicate those that are going to be playing the game. Please note any changes to the team roster after the game starts can only be made by the referee or the court supervisor. If you have a fill-in player, you must check if they're eligible to play with staff prior to the game starting. This should be done as early as possible to ensure there are no delays in the starting of the game. Now that the attendances have been recorded, we need to start the game clock. We start the game clock by clicking on the start button. You can see the clock is started to count backwards. With the clock running, you can now record any points scored or fouls. To record points scored, click on the player's name, making sure there's a red frame around the name, and then clicking on the points they have scored. Remembering a free throw is one point, two points for a field goal, and three points for baskets scored anywhere outside the three point arc. You can see that those two points have now gone up on the scoreboard and it also appears beside the player's name. So click the player and then the number of points they scored. The player and the number of points they scored. You can also record team fouls. There's four types of fouls on the electronic score sheet. Regular fouls, tech fouls, unsportsmanlike fouls, and disqualification fouls. The referee will let you know what type of foul the player is getting. So you click the player and then the type of the foul. You can see the team fouls are recorded in the box underneath the team's name. So the player and then the type of foul. You can also record timeouts. Timeouts are recorded by clicking on the timeout button and then clicking on the team that's called the timeout. You can see that this has been recorded because in the timeouts remaining, MWBA now has zero timeouts. You may need to pause the clock for timeouts depending on what competition you are playing you can always ask a referee if the clock stops for your for timeout once the timeout is finished you can resume and continue to add points 
If you make an error at any time, you can click the undo button. Please note that this only undoes the last action and no further. When the period ends for the first half, the clock will stop and the period two will highlight and you have 18 minutes back on the clock. Restart the game by clicking on the start button and commencing putting in the points and fouls for the second period. When a player receives their fifth foul, they will get a strike through their name alerting you to tell the referees that they received their fifth foul and they must leave the court. When a team receives their seventh team foul, a light appears above the team that gets to go to the three throw line. Please remember that the scoreboard is the actual timing for the game. You can make changes to the clock on the electronic score sheet to match the scoreboard if needed if the clock has run out of time. Notice that the score on your electronic score clock doesn't match the score on the scoreboard and the clocks run out just add another 30 seconds onto your clock start the clock and make the changes so that that this, this score matches the score on the scoreboard you can then just wind the clock down The referee can come and make sure that it's now the correct score on both the scoreboard and the score sheet and end the game.